Good to have you back on this special edition of News Day. Now, public health care in Nigeria may be in a state of utter despair. And with only a diminishing number of privileged ones able to access improved care, the outlook is nothing close to the ideal. Now, the way around this, according to some experts, is to embrace preventive rather than reactionary health care. We are now being joined by Dr. Enahulu Odia, a consultant family physician at Evercare Hospital here in Lekki, Lagos, to explore this subject a little further. It's good to have you with us, doctor. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, let's, for starters, how would you describe preventive health care and how prominent uh, is this uh, subject in Nigeria's uh, health care system? Well, uh, preventive health care is quite new in our space, especially in the health care system space. But it's one area where I think we all should focus. Um, health practitioners, policy makers that have to work on health should focus on health because Preventive health care, it's the aspect of medical care that would prevent the complications and disease processes which bring people to the hospital. So preventive health care, it's quite new. It's uh, a new concept in the medical world, but it's an area where we are all trying to go into. Mm -hmm. And it's where we should all urge everybody to be in. Okay. I'm curious as to as regards the affordability of preventive health care because truth be told we know we know the state of the Nigerian economy most people yeah. if they feel a certain way that's when they feel oh let me go see a doctor mm. after having treated malaria and typhoid of course you know that's usually the default setting let me go yeah. treat malaria and typhoid and then I can go see a doctor if I don't feel better in three days so how affordable is preventive health preventive health care for the average Nigerian. Yes, so with malaria as a case in question, mm -hmm. preventive, preventive health care will educate you on how to prevent coming down with malaria. So you come see a doctor and he provides health education or any form of intervention he provides for you. And he's able to tell you, oh, you're supposed to use your insecticide treated nets. You're supposed to take prophylaxis for a woman who is pregnant so you don't come down. This basic tenets mm -hmm. in education for preventive medicine it's just what it is. It's not uh, something too expensive. It's not a therapy. It's not another kind of intervention. So education forms a huge pillar and a cornerstone in preventive healthcare. When you talk about education here, um, is there a need to actually go see a doctor for preventive uh, healthcare? You can actually access this in this age of uh, uh, you know, the social uh, media where you can, um, you know, anything to do with preventive health, you can actually read about this on your own. Yes, yeah. So preventive health care, I talked about uh, health promotion. Yeah. Uh, the education, it's just basically health promotion. But the other okay. thing, the other aspects to it, health screening, vaccinations, they are all aspects of preventive health care. Okay. And they are all aspects that will um, prevent disease process from getting to its end stage. Um, I'll give an example. Um, diabetes, for example, you come in and you are screened for diabetes and it puts you in a pre-diabetic stage. That tells you, informs the doctor, or informs your physician to provide lifestyle changes or lifestyle education that you would adopt as a patient that will stop you from going into being a diabetic. Now, when it comes to you know, you're of course talking about preventive, um, that, that preventive aspect. I'm just wondering how soon you think, it, in terms of timeline, it might gain traction in Nigeria? Because this is not, a, this might not be something that resonates with, too, with a significant percentage. So how soon do you think we can see this replicates, you know, in various states and nooks and crannies? Well, uh, by training, the way physicians are trained and healthcare workers, or healthcare workers basically, uh, you are trained to provide interventions that would help patients not have complications or not develop so deep that they will have to spend more in terms of seeking health care or having interventions that will require tertiary care. So you, preventive health care is what everybody should know. It's something, it's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. It's, it has to do with the, 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 your diet, mm. what you're taking. It has to do with um, your exercise routine. It has to do with uh, smoking cessation. It has to do with um, reduction of alcohol consumption. It has to do with vaccination, especially when there are 
uh, diseases that's become epidemic, case in question, COVID. Mm. It has to do with um, regular checks, regular health checks to screen common disorders, non-communicable diseases, uh, cancers, which are becoming quite rife in our society. So preventive health care is a, is a lifestyle and it's something everybody, the society and everybody should be made aware of and should adopt. So it's just a way of life. Indeed, a way of life. Now, I'd like us to look into some specifics here in terms of caring for the elderly. Uh, what are the challenges for preventive health care and how effective would it be? So for elderly, for well, elderly, I, I suppose you mean adult. Adults and of course the aged as <laughs> the well. The aged, mm. yeah. So um, a good way to go around it is to go for screenings mm. or regular health checks. And um, there's a concept referred to as a wellness check. And um, you go into a wellness clinic, you, you, you walk in, you don't have any complaint, but you want to just make an assessment and know what it is that is wrong with you. Mm. Have a possible idea, especially when um, there's a family history, especially when you are presenting with some symptoms that were not there before now. So you go into a wellness clinic, you have a physical done, and you have some investigations that are tailored to check for disorders, non-communicable diseases, for instance. You are, your blood pressure is checked. That tells you whether you are hypertensive. Blood sugar is assessed. The other investigation that looks into cardiovascular disorders, an ECG, an echo, uh, patients who are in the elderly category, like you just alluded yes, to, uh, would be checked for mainly malignancies, okay. cardiac disorders. These are things that are quite common right now in that age group. Mm. So you want to look at, you want to screen them for, for the male patients, you want to screen for prostate cancers, uh, female patients, you want to look at breast cancers, you want to look at cervical cancers. These are areas where they can have issues with. So you do screening. We have screening modalities for all these disorders. And that's where preventive health care can come in. Very good. When it comes to preventive health care, I'm also you know, curious as regards if, um, the stakeholders in this aspect and if everyone is pulling their weight accordingly to make it you know, more popular. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get that. The stakeholders yes. in preventive health care, is everybody pulling their weight as they should or is there room for improvement? Well, there is room for improvement. Like I, like I mentioned, healthcare workers, uh, the brunt of this, it's with healthcare work, physicians especially. So a patient comes to you, it's the opportunity, every, every encounter you have with a patient, it's an opportunity for you to educate that patient. Mm. It's an opportunity for you to promote the health of that patient. It's the opportunity for you to tell the patient um, screening that are offered in your facility, wherever you practice. It's the opportunity to tell that patient vaccines that are available. It's the opportunity for you to tell that patient lifestyle changes that the patient should adopt. It's that, the opportunity for that patient to know that weight control is important, diet is important, exercise, regular, uh, exercise it's important so it's 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 your it's the opportunity for you to educate the patient about his health seeking behavior which is very 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 important because um, we found that that uh, uh, anecdotal evidence has shown us that the health seeking behavior of most of the people in this part of the world it's what determines how they go about seeking what would enable them get better you have a headache, for instance, and you go to a drugstore. Mm. Or you have um, a rash on your body and you go to see your pastor. Mm. Or you have the stomach pain and you call your mother in the village or you call mm. your uncle in the village. So the health seeking behavior will be modified by the healthcare practitioner when you see that patient. The government has a role as well, um, strengthening our health system, strengthening health facilities, the private sector has a role as well, uh, especially what we do in our facility in Evercare. So these are ways where healthcare can be strengthened and preventive healthcare can be very good. made. Very, very, very very I'd like to thank you, Dr. Naholu Odia, a consultant family physician. Many thanks for your thoughts on that topic. I wish you all the best. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure.